Hey everybody, welcome back to Ryan Makes Sense. Today we are looking at ticker symbol QRTEA. This is Curate Retail. We're going to go ahead and look at the stock. We're going to dive into uh, the balance sheet. We're going to look at assets and liabilities. We're going to see if the stock deserves to be at 71 cents. We're also going to do a little bit deeper of a dive because looking at the financials really got me interested in kind of what's going on in the bigger picture. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on in. Uh, I mean, looking at this chart, you can tell it's gone through some hard times. Once being worth almost $18 is now under a dollar at 71 cents. Uh, looking at, again, we're on the monthly chart. I like to look at the bigger picture and then whittle our way down to get uh, a more accurate, precise, potential turnaround, if possible. So we're looking at the strength on the monthly 35. The bears have this. The monthly momentum actually looks like this is likely heading downward. Money flow was going up nicely for about a year. Since December 2022, up until, excuse me, uh, February 2024, looks like monthly, I'm sorry, money flow was increasing. Uh, and then our relative momentum indicator down here, obviously scraping the bottom of the barrel. Looks like it's going to go down further with our MACD momentum also crossing downwards. So it does not look very promising for the stock at the moment. Uh, looking at potential reversal, I mean, again, look at this downtrend. We do have some nice green candles here, but we do have some more further red candles and then more red. And this current month of July, we're at 56 million shares traded. Last month, we were at 89 million shares. So weaker volume, weaker strength. This is likely going to lean in favor of the bears at the moment. Um, but looking at this uh, financial, looking at these financial data points, what do you notice on your end? Because I notice a few things. Uh, and I'll just give you a second to just kind of digest this or you can pause it and I'm going to jump in. Uh, number one I want to look, want you to look at is their sales are just kind of falling off a cliff to the downside. Kind of a beige flag number one. They're not profitable. That's not really a beige flag. However, they're a $10 billion, they do $10 billion in revenue, but their market cap is only $284 million, meaning there is a huge, extremely large disconnect between where institutions and hedge funds believe this stock should be compared to where it is today. Uh, and it looks like it possibly could have started in 2021 with um, sales going down and down and further down and further down. That could have been the catalyst. Uh, we also have absurd debt right here. They are paying, they are addressing the debt because you can see it went from 28.9 to 25.26. So they are addressing the debt. Um, so there is that sales over the past five years negative. That is not good. It just shows that they are not as resilient as some other companies, especially going through uh, COVID. Gross margins, 23%, not bad. Uh, that's more of like a value. That would, if I see a stock that's at 23% gross margins, under 25, uh, it's more of a value stronghold stock. And that's not the case with this. Uh, institutions own 62%. We're going to go ahead and just double check that. Insiders own 10% with a little bit of an uptick there. Uh, a little bit of shorting, not too much. Um, but the, this huge disconnect really got me going down a rabbit hole. I started creating a video and it, you know, whatever. Now I have a whole bunch of tabs open to kind of just show you guys. So I'm on the Curate website right now. And you can see they have QVC, which is the that one channel where they sell items in the Home Shopping Network. They have 100% ownership there. They also have 80% of Liberty Technology Venture Capital, which I did some research. I'm here right now. I found that on Crunchbase. Essentially, they invested in tech slash cyber companies over in Israel. Uh, all of these are over in Israel. 
which there's one that's San Jose, California. Let's see. New York, San Jose, California. Okay, so there's two from New York, one from California, and one, two in Israel. So Overwolf and Next Silicone are Israel. Uh, looking at, again, Overwolf, this is what they invested in back in, back here, 2018, 19, and 2021. That's when times were really good and valuations had skyrocketed. Um, my concern now is the same find the same investment they had with these companies is likely down. Likely. Um, I can't say for sure, but I know uh you know things got things were really good for the speculative markets and uh it's come back down. So that also plays into the overall picture here where this company is not only they don't they don't just own qvc and home shopping network but they also have investments that they are dabbling in on the side not dabbling but you know they're managing investments uh and then they have cornerstone brands uh apparel lifestyle brands front gate ballard designs garrett hill grand and road 100 percent ownership so they have looking at qvc hsn cornerstone brands looks like they're more of an apparel shopping company but they also have investments in tech and cyber companies so there is typically when you have a company that's kind of spread out like that it's uh it's hard to gauge what their bread and butter is and it just kind of shows um not one true focal point really um so there is that uh going down here really quickly we do have david Law rawlinson as the ceo and i have his linkedin right here so we can see what type of uh experience he has but really quickly we are on the balance sheet and something interesting caught my eye. The total liabilities went down about, right here, total liabilities went down about 249 million. But that also brought assets down 368, 378, 387 million. So if they're going to reduce liabilities by 249 million, they're taking a hit also on the assets. And we can see that their total assets and their total liabilities are almost one for one, which is scary because when asset when liabilities overtake assets, that's when the B word comes into play and it's bankruptcy. So I don't like to throw that word around. Um, so there is that. Uh, also, more beige flag items. The president and CEO, It's there's a lot of traders, investors, what have you, that look especially for, and funds that look for CEO purchases. When a CEO purchases, I mean, $100,000 worth, um, it's... It's good, but it's also something that companies strategically do to get their stock to show up on certain scanners or meet some type of threshold to kind of bring attention to the company or the stock to be like, hey, CEO purchased. Uh, in my opinion, this kind of is a beige flag because he, David, received 147,000 shares and he purchased 100,000 worth. So if he wanted to get out or basically it's kind of a insurance almost he got 147,000 for free he bought 100,000 so he's kind of getting a two for one type of deal so if his shares do go down 50% and he sells out you know the 147 plus the 247,000 shares it's kind of coming out even um so just uh you know if he thinks here and there um 
looking at their income statement as well, it's going down year over year. They did 2.3 billion uh, Q1 last year. They did 2.6 billion. Um, it's it looks like they it's just going down. Um, and also something that really really stuck out to me. Look at Q3 of 2022. They had a negative. 2.7 billion dollars here in net income and then it goes back to negative 51 positive 20 positive 107 positive 1 negative 273 negative 1 a little interesting there i mean i i don't know what the company was going through q3 2022 maybe it was a difficult time but if you were to put down a folder in front of me and say hey this is our company our revenue is 2.7 billion we spent 2.2 billion to get that were negative net income negative 2.7 billion i think i would probably run for the hills i don't care what kind of company it is if you sell diamonds gold ai i mean that kind of that's just sketch it's questionable it's questionable so uh we're gonna run my calculation here because i'm just genuinely interested i also have their what institutions are buying and selling so we'll look there in a minute I do want to look at David Rawlinson's uh, profile really quick so we can kind of get a gauge of what the CEO has experience in. I'm just going to go to show 12 experiences. Let's just go down to the bottom. White House fellow served executive office of the president. Pretty cool. Uh, bu -bu -bu, VPG count general counsel ITT member of the board. Granger. Granger's a pretty good company. Nielsen's a good company. Nielsen IQ. Discover Financial Services. And now the CEO of Curate. Um, so just interesting history, but you know, it's stable. It's stable. It's good. Um, I mean, this is the kind of CEO you'd want to lead this company. He's been here since 2021, and we can see since 2021. It's just gone downhill, but this could be a favorable turnaround in the long, in the long game. Uh, just getting things to become more efficient, uh, cutting extra fat where possible. Um, but I mean, it's just not what we look for in an investment at this point. Sales are going down. Earnings per share overall is very interesting. We have a reversal, positive reversal, negative reversal positive reversal potentially for 2024 um shares outstanding fine but yeah it doesn't really negate uh where the company's going i don't know if they have a five-year plan 10-year plan i look at what we have in front of us today i don't care if they promise us the world tomorrow or they're having a five-year turnaround plan let's see what they're gauging for five years earnings per share next five years negative eight percent I don't know if that's the company doing that, but I mean, that could be realistic or it could be really off. It's really hard to gauge five years, honestly. Um, I was hoping for something like Blockbuster, 500%, 300%. We have EPS this year of 254%. So you, I like to focus on what we have, what we've seen historically, and where we could potentially see where it's going in the future. I don't like empty promises or things that can be made up from uh, voice or speech or written down on paper. I have to see it. I have to see in statements, financially regulated statements. So that's where we're at with this one. Uh, let's go ahead and bust out my handy dandy calculator. So they have 284 million in market cap. We don't include the market cap unless it's over 1 billion. So income, they have negative 166 million flat. Sales, they do 10 billion, 600, 10 million. Very cool. Cash on hand. Let's go ahead and see the balance sheet. Okay. Um, cash is 1 billion, 117 million flat. 1 billion, 117 million, yep. Uh, and their cash is fine. 
I mean, it's not all, it's not all time high. It's not all time low. So no real concerns of the cash position. That's a good cash position to have. Total debt is six billion four hundred forty one million flat. Where do I get these flat round numbers? Uh, total debt again. It is they are addressing it. it is going down. It's basically been going down since beginning of twenty twenty three. So. Good for them, good for David and his team, uh, really actually making an impact. They've reduced it over $1 billion in from 2023 to Q1 2024, so good for them. All right, and we're gonna take this and we're gonna divide it by 383,050,000. We're gonna get a really high number here. $13 stock. I don't really think so. I don't think this, uh, well, I know this, this calculation doesn't attribute for the multi-billion dollar uh, losses year over year. So um, that does point me in the direction though that this stock could be undervalued. What could reinforce that is if institutions and insiders have purchased more than 62.34%. And they currently hope, currently have, or are holding, drum roll, uh, do I have to do it by hand? Uh, I'm in the wrong page. Intel. All right, one moment, please. Let's see if this brings up, uh, a more updated page. This might be, be the page I was looking for. While that loads, let's just look over here. I charted this out yesterday during my video, which the video deleted somehow while I was gone. I don't know if someone came broken and deleted it, but uh, what we have here is essentially several things. Um, Basically, this dotted green line, the stock has never crossed below it. Um, but this chart does have negative values, negative four right here, negative two. I mean, the stock would have to go to zero, essentially go negative. Um, every time it's come to this purple channel, the bottom, I mean, it's gone and done some really nice moves. However, we can see it failed here and is struggling to stay above uh the purple line right here so we're really zoomed in right now uh the company did get warned for delisting basically the stock has to be above one dollar so this stock is at risk of having a reverse split which um they need to do or they're gonna have to pump up the stock somehow and keep it over a dollar for several days to come back into compliance but the next apex area of opportunity we have right here this is end of 2024 uh right here or the stock is going to come down to 15 14 cents and it's going to have an area of opportunity right there um in both cases this is something i would stay away from at the moment okay um so we don't have an actual figure here, but we're gonna take this and we're just gonna do it manually because that's how we gotta roll sometimes. So 241,596,234, and we're gonna take that and divide it by 383,050,000. So times 100. So institutions own 63.07%. That is less than a 1% increase here. I think we just got to stay on the sidelines for this one. I think if the CEO and the company is really gung-ho about turning it around, I, I don't know what they're going to do with their investments, but I think maybe take write them off as a loss or something and just really focus on what makes them money. And that's just my opinion, but 
I mean, these year over year sales in the billions are just the trend is your friend until the end and the trend is going down at the moment. So, and it's, you can see sales right now are 10.61 billion. That's trailing 12 months. And the last year, 2023 was 10.9. So it looks like we're con going to continue into 2025 with lower revenues year over year. Uh, one thing that's really going to note a clear turnaround is in my opinion, getting the debt situation under control getting profitable and the CEO and the shareholder, the C-suite director, CFO, really taking a bite of this company because if they truly believe in the company, they will show you indirectly by purchasing shares. However, at this, at this juncture, you know, they're just getting stock options and the CEO purchased 100,000 shares, but he got 147 for free, 147,000. So, I mean, if this stock dips another 50% down to 30 cents, he could sell this 250,000 and recoup his money essentially here. So um, that's where we're at here. I mean, we have some selling going on down here as well. We don't know if this is planned or end of year selling. We can't really base it off that, but we can see that the director sold all the way to zero. Greg Maffey sold all the way to zero. Yeah, so. You know, take that with what you will. I would stay away from this company at least for the foreseeable future. Um, we need a real big turnaround here. Uh, a lot of kind of bearish articles in here as well. So if you guys want to do your research on that, but presented with the facts in front of me with institutions and hedge funds not really purchasing at all. Let's see what Vanguard and BlackRock are doing. I mean, look at this. Like I said, the trend is your friend until the end, and it doesn't look like the end because it's still going down. Vanguard decreased, holy cow, they have a lot of shares. They decreased 24%. Dodge and Cox sold out 99%. Contrarious Investments purchased 32 million shares. Crazy. Greg Maffey, no idea. Whoops. Uh, BlackRock sold out 69%. So... Yeah, I just don't see a lot of benefits of owning this one or taking risks. Honestly, if you're really gung-ho about Curate, uh, I don't know. There's other options out there. So uh, this could be a good one in the future. Don't get me wrong. The CEO actually has really good experience. Uh, I'm excited to kind of see where he goes from here. You could see that the company was doing $14 billion in revenue when he joined. And the kind of after effect we're seeing is not, it is attributed to him, but I, he's, he's probably doing the right thing and cutting, cutting costs, uh, making some tough choices and it's bringing their overall sales down. And that's fine because there's a huge disconnect with wall street and where their sales are. So I think this is going to have to come down several more billion. Um, and it'll make the company more efficient in the long run. And I think, uh, Rollins, David Rollins, We'll get credit for that if he, you know, sticks it through and goes through some tough times, makes some strong people, strong people make good times, yada, yada. <laughs> anyway, if you made this far, consider subscribing, leave a comment, dislike, thumbs up, whatever you do. Uh, have a great day.